And you're listening to Media Mornings on Vancouver Co-op Radio. Last spring, we covered here at Media Mornings the uh, the massive cuts of uh, t- to English as a Second Language uh, programs at Vancouver Community College. On the line to give us an update on uh, on the situation there at VCC is Faculty Association President at VCC, Karen Short. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Jane, and thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's it's uh, great to to have you back. And it, it occurred to me that you know it's it's uh, September. People t- start thinking about returning to to school. So, what is the uh, the status of the nearly three thousand students who regularly sign up for VCC's ESL programs each? term? Well, it is critical. It's urgent that the government listen. Um, We have students waiting in line to get in. We have students that can't get classes uh, that are being told not to even bother coming to the college because there's no offerings of the classes they needed. There's students that are partway through their their courses and they can't continue on. Um, it, It is absolutely critical. And the government doesn't seem to be listening. I've been trying to get a meeting with Mr. Virk for two to three months constantly calling and I haven't had a meeting with him and I, I he needs to take some leadership on this file this is critical and I'm calling on Mr. Virk to pay attention because we're just a little over a hundred days left before we're down to almost zero at VCC we will still have the federally funded link program but other than that all ESL courses will end on December 17th we have 70 faculty on layoff notice uh, they will be working right up to the last day of their notice period teaching students. And then on January 2nd, about 2,200 students that normally would return to VCC for English language training will have nowhere to go. Uh, there isn't the capacity in the system to meet the needs of these students, and there is no plan in place from the government that we know of. So that's... 2,200 students who will not be receiving um, ESL instruction that they need. That's correct. And, you know, we always had full classes when we were running at our capacity, and we could have taken more. So the need is out there in the community. It's there. It's something that is going to be beneficial to all of us that people are able to speak English, uh, to read, to understand, and um, to hold people back uh, with something as short-sighted as saying, well, we're going to cut some funding from education. Uh, It doesn't make any sense to us. You know, we have about 3,000 English language learners at VCC every term. And some of those students will able, be able to continue because there still is a federally funded program. But the province, it's the province we're calling on to take the responsibility under the College and Institute Act to work with adults on their educational needs. And if people need to learn English, the government of this province needs to step up and provide that training. So about 2,200 students that normally would come on January 2nd will not be able to come mm-hmm. to VCC. That's huge. Yeah, and our economy, for years to come, it's going to take a little while for the impact, but people won't be able to get jobs, and they'll go unfilled. And then there's all the societal things that come from people being underemployed and poverty. And it, and, and I, the isolation that, yeah, uh, that yeah. occurs if, if you can't communicate as well as as, as you'd like with um, within a society that you're living. And within your family. You know, yeah. I hear Christy yeah. Clark talk about the family. Well, what's more important than a family? Family being able to survive uh, in this in this city and and thrive and and go forward. So if the children see their parents staying home because they can't work, what kind of example are we setting for those children? Yeah, it's a powerful point. It's very very yeah. very sad. Yeah. So I, I guess maybe to 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 go back to the the uh, the cause of this, I know that 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 it's a result of of federal funding cuts. Correct. 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 Yes. Um, so is is Part of what's going on is is the resistance of the provincial government to step up partly a sense that it's not their responsibility. Yeah, I, you know part. what, they, they don't seem to um, want to even talk about this, and, and they need to. Uh, the province did receive money from the federal government, and that money came into the, the college's base grant. So for 30, 40 years, we operated under the 
base grant, uh, grant of ESL being part of what this college does. And so we have uh, excellent curriculum. We have instructors that have been teaching for years and years to the highest level of English language training. So the, the federal government made a change in their funding, and they are still funding immigrants. So our, our call is to the province to take care of adult learners in this province in their educational needs, which is what they are required to do. Other provinces in Canada do it. I don't know what it is with this province that they think they can shirk this responsibility. And uh, they need to think about this and talk to us about it because it's critical. And it, it, one of the things that I think is important to, to point out is, is that uh, education that, that occurs um, at the post-secondary level and, and, and in, I would say in particular things like adult education um, and, and ESL are really essential parts of our public education system in, yeah, in, in, in BC. Mm-hmm. Can't get much more essential than being able to communicate, right? That's right. <laughs> to speak the language, to understand. We have doctors, engineers, architects, and they need, they need some training. Uh, they, they meet the requirements uh, to come into the country. It's not about that. But when you get here, it is different, and you do need, maybe you need a year here, maybe you need two years of, of part-time English training or full-time, whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. It's, it needs to be there. And, you know, for years to come, people that take this training, this English language learning, will go on and be taxpayers, and they will pay back mm-hmm. to this government. So it's just short-sightedness. It's not that this is actually going to cost the government any money. In fact, it's probably costing them by their short-sightedness of cutting this training right now because maybe they're going to save a little bit of money right now. They don't have to do this, I think. But in the years to come, they're not going to have people being able to work at their capacity and pay back in their high-income bracket. Yeah. And it's, it's just, and the societal problems that come from it, I just can't tell you. And it's an extraordinary it's an extraordinary loss of 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 re, of a of, res, of a resource a resource okay. of yeah. of often very well educated people who just need to upgrade their language mm-hmm. skills so that they can work in the area that they've been trained. Mm-hmm. And to you know to encourage immigration into this country and then to say oh sorry we're not going to support you. Well, what does that say to someone who comes here who makes the commitment to Canada? comes to this province, they're willing to give, and the hardest working people you, you can imagine uh, coming here, waiting in line at 3 or 4 in the morning, hoping to get an English class, and then being turned away and say, well, maybe, maybe in a year, maybe in six months we can get you a class. What do you do in that time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if people are, are upset and uh, looking for what they can do to, uh, to support uh, uh, the, the students um, at VCC and the, and the, uh, the instructors, uh, the impact that this has had on, on these 70-plus uh, instructors that are, are, are receiving notices is also something that can't be uh, overlooked. What can people do to support you? Well, um, first of all, let me just go back to the 70 instructors. Those are the ones that are on layoff notice right now. 40 instructors took early retirement in March. We were at 190 instructors teaching English language last summer. We'll be down to 40 by January. So that's 150 people who were offering English language training, a much-needed resource, and they're, they're not going to be able to do that. So that, that's important to note that yeah. it, is, it is huge. It is a big chunk of what VCC does, and the students that come in and learn English language often go on to our career programs, so they're right on line for a, for a, for a job. Uh, and then what can people do? Uh, you can go to our website. It's eslmatters.ca. Mm-hmm. And very easy to send a message there to Christy Clark, to Amrick Virk. Uh, my email contact is there. If people want to write to me and tell me their story, mm-hmm. we, we will take it further. So invite people that if you care about this issue, you have to get active now because the clock is ticking. As I say, it's a little over 100 days left and on January, people won't go any, won't have anywhere to go. The few that are left. So, so I really encourage people to get make your voice heard with this government because that's about what that's that is what you need to do. And uh, I understand you're going to be one of the speakers at the Celebrate and Defend Public Education Rally on September second. That's yes. Tuesday at uh, at five at yes. the Vancouver School Board offices. Yes, I will. I'll be there. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, th- Thanks so much, Karen, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you, Jane. Okay, bye-bye.
That was Karen Short, uh, president of the Vancouver Community College Faculty Association. Just to let you know that these uh, these layoffs um, make up more than 25% of Vancouver Community College's faculty.